What's going on, chosen elect? Glad y'all could join me once again. You know, uh, the path that leads to life is straight and narrow. Few there be that find it. So uh, I'm glad y'all could join me. You know what time it is. Fasten them seat belts. Get you something to eat. Get you something to drink. If you're fasting, you know that's even better. Let's start today with Mark chapter 8. Verse 34, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Uh, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Words and read, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, this is the requirements of salvation right here. Jesus says, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, right? That's your John Doe, Jane and John Doe identity, your natural identity, right? And take up his cross, right? Uh, sacrifice of your Jane and John Doe identity, your natural identity, and follow me, right? Whosoever will save his life, she'll lose it. If you come off that cross, uh, if you decide to just live your natural life, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose eternal life. You're gonna lose immortal life. That's what the Lord wants to give us, uncreated life, His life. But whosoever shall lose his life, your natural life, right? For my sake and the gospels, you might want to highlight that gospels for the gospel's sake, right? And this is the apostles' doctrine, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The same shall save it. That's how you save your life. You know, by losing your life. Okay. Uh, not leaning to your own understanding, but lean to God's truth. God's word. Right? For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Huh? That's self-explanatory, like your movie stars, your superstars, your sports stars, right? Your entertainers. Gain the whole world and lose your own soul. I mean, is that really profit to do that? Huh? How many of y'all would trade your life for the life of Michael Jackson, what he had? Or name your favorite entertainer. You Would you trade your life for that entertainer, superstar? Just because they got millions of dollars, gain the whole world and lose your own soul. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's better to be to be a poor man. You know, remember R Lazarus, the poor man, and the rich man. Lazarus, the poor man, had nothing. The rich man had everything, and they both died. And the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell, but Lazarus was caught up into the bosom of Abraham. For eternity, Lazarus had then had everything. And uh, that rich man who enjoyed himself in earth, he had nothing. He was in torments with an S. You know, that's Luke chapter 16, verse 19 on down for those of you who want to read that. Let's finish this here. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Would you trade your soul for something? Esau did. He traded his birthright for uh, food. What would you? What are you trading yours in for? Money, sex, drugs, food. All right, people do this. You know they do trade in there. That's why not all Israel's is Israel. You know, the Israel after the flesh have uh, traded their soul, their uh, eternal life, their birthright for something. Fools go some something foolish. You know, whether it be money, their job. They spouse, they children, you know. That list is, is numerous. Yeah, you can sell your soul. Remember, Esau sold his for for me. You know? Because he thought he was gonna die of starvation. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words, the Bible, the scriptures, the gospel, right? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's kind of stick with that today. Be ashamed of me and my gospel, right? And this adulterous 
and sinful gen and you know this world is wicked today. It's more wicked now than ever before. Jesus told us it would be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot in Matthew 24. And these last days, it'll be go right back again to like the days of Noah, right before the flood. And the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, the days of Lot. That's where we're at now. Right? And do you rather have the world or do you rather, uh, or would you rather hide yourself in God's word? Well, the way you live in is, is the way you believe. The way you're now living is that's the way you believe. He said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, if you're ashamed of Jesus' name and his words, and this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father. When he come revealing himself, right, with the holy angels, he said he's going to be ashamed of you because you're ashamed of him. That's pretty deep. All that was meat. All that was pretty deep. And, uh, uh, but that's the difference between the, uh, the Israel elect of God and Israel after the flesh. Let's go to Romans 1. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 1. Uh, let's start with verse 16. Because we're dealing with that gospel, right? And it says, uh, <clears throat> For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you? Are you ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or have you given up your life for the gospel of Jesus Christ like we just read in Mark 8? You know, he said you got to give up your life for the gospel. Your natural life. If you find your life in this world, maybe you went to college school, you got your degrees or whatever, uh, you found your life, your career. Some people still seeking and searching for it, their career, trying to find their life in this world. And uh, the, Jesus just told us, if we find our life, we're going to lose it. But if we lose it for his name's sake and the gospel's, Right? We shall be saved. We shall be preserved. By denying ourselves, Jane and John Doe, natural identity. Right? Check this out. For I am not ashamed of the apostles' doctrine. That's what this is. The apostles' doctrine. The gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what they preached. Right? The gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Right? That's this book, this Bible, is the power of God, right, unto our salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So you got to have the faith of Jesus. And that's the gift of God. That's Ephesians 2.8. Faith is the gift of God. We're saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Right. And it tells us that Romans 6, 23, that Jesus Christ is the gift of God. So the faith comes with Jesus Christ as you believe in him, on him. Right. Uh, if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right. For with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, but with the heart. Uh, man believe unto righteousness. With the heart, man believe unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Right? That's your Romans 10, 9. Uh, as it is written, and we stick with as it is written. Jesus even fought the devil and defeated the devil by saying, It is written, it is written, it is written. The just shall live by faith. Right? Of the gospel. Right. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And these are God's people. Right. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Right. 
For God has showed it unto them, you know, even in your history, your heritage, your, your skin color is the proof, you know, to the, your bone, your marrow, you know, your spirit. For the invisible things, there it is, of him from the creation of the world are clearly, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, cause and effect cause and effect even his eternal power and God he his son Jesus Christ so that they are without excuse because Jesus came light is coming to the earth the world we got the Bible right before you the Bible is the only proof that you need is the Bible that the Bible is the only proof you need because that when they knew God that's the Israelites. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Right? They went after the world. They went after the flesh. Right? And their foolish heart was darkened. I mean, they didn't put God's word in their heart. They didn't receive Jesus Christ, the new covenant. Right? Professing themselves to be wise, they became Fools coming up with their own doctrines. Right? And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like the corruptible man. Uh, definitely the Mosaic law Hebrew Israelites dudes have done this. And birds and four-footed beast creeping things. They change the glory of God. Of this incorruptible God and to an image made like corruptible men. They say Joseph and Mary had sex. They don't believe in the virgin. These are corruptible dudes. You know. Uh, reprobate concerning the faith. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. Right? To design their own bodies between themselves. And believe me, they sneaking and creeping, y'all. They doing it all. We, just, we reading it now. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. They say Jesus is not his name. They changed the, the truth of God into a lie. Right? Talking about wasn't no letter J. You know. So they reject the record that God has given of his son. 1 John 5, 9 and 10. They made God a liar. They called God a liar. And Romans 3, 4 said, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Let God's word be true. But they changed, they have changed his word. Why do you think there's so many different Bibles, versions of Bibles and stuff? That, that's what they have done. The heathens have done, changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Their lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They're more earthly than heavenly, than spiritual. They don't have a spirit. They have rejected Jesus the Christ. Right? The God's gift. Right? Who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. They wicked, man. They freaks. That's what that vile affection, they freaks. They doing it all. You know? perversion for even their women even their wives did change their natural use into that which is against nature they women as freaks mm -hmm. that's the day and age we live in this Simon Gomorrah day and age alphabet group y'all know what's up with that and likewise also men even you dudes Leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Y'all see it? Men with men, working that which is unslimy, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. Y'all know what y'all doing. Huh? Y'all freaks. Freaky freaks. Monsters. Abominable. Disgusting. Right? Y'all all of that. For rejecting Jesus Christ. 
Eh? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Right, because they don't see God's word as pure. They don't see Jesus Christ as pure. They don't see a virgin as pure. So they have a reprobate mind. They, they, they mind and conscience is all corrupt. They thoughts is all corrupt. Just like in Genesis, in the days of Noah. Genesis 8, 21. Genesis chapter, what is it, uh, 6 or 5. Then when he destroyed the, the world with the flood, because of that thoughts, meant that the earth was violent and corrupt. All flesh had corrupted itself on the earth. That's what they are till this day. Man, these are the days of Noah again. These are the days of Sodom and Gomorrah again. The days of Lot. Like the days before the flood. Reprobate minds. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Fornication. Look. Fornication. They try to act like they don't know what that is. Sex before marriage, y'all. And adultery. Adultery is in there. That's when you are married. Going from person to person. Same sex, all of that. Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, murder in their heart. They doctrine is murder. To to deny Jesus and and confess a strange God, an idol God, another God is murder. Right? And to do and indoctrinate others. To another God is murder. Debate. They love doing that. Deceit. Malignity. Whispers. Backbiters. Haters of God. Look, they hate Jesus. They're spiteful. Right? They are proud. They are boasters. Right? Inventors of evil things. They got their own business. They making money. Man, it's the wicked that profit in the world, the Bible tells us that. The wicked. In uh, Psalm 73. Disobedient to parents. Right? Your heavenly father and your mother, uh, Jerusalem. Right? Your spiritual parents. Right? And some of their natural parents. Especially that Israel that's not of the elect. Right? They uncircumcised and hard in ears. Without understanding, they don't understand God. They don't understand the scriptures. They don't understand Jesus. They don't understand God's ways. They don't understand the fear of the Lord. Now, they don't understand righteousness, sanctification, redemption. They don't understand nothing. They don't have spiritual understanding. Right? Covenant breakers, they... Come on. Jesus Christ is the everlasting covenant. Without natural affection... Impeccable, unmerciful. They definitely don't have that to uh, convert souls. You know, we'll get into that with this Bible to to win souls. Proverbs eleven thirty. He that winning souls is is wise. That's merciful. That's having mercy. God will have mercy on the merciful. All right. Who knowing the judgment of God. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Right? Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have pleasure in the wicked. They have pleasure in this world. The movie, they had pleasure watching the movies. And these movies are, are, are unclean and abominable. Right? The video games. The music. They doing it all, man. The rappers, they ain't separated themselves. They have not sacrificed. They have not set themselves apart. They are of the world. So the Lord turned them over to what? Strong delusion. To be what? Damned. Strong delusion that they what? Will believe a lie that they might be damned. The Lord want them damned. Do I, we got to get that? Let's get it, because some people might not know that that's even there. Uh, second day is two. Let's get it. Uh, 
second day is to let's start with verse eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed, right? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, right? That's the scriptures, the gospel, and destroy with the brightness of his coming, his glory. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's the border of wickedness. Right? And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness. Right? That's what we just read, Romans 1. And them that perish because they receive not the love look, of the truth. Can you highlight that? They receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They don't want the love of the truth. Right? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness more than light. And because men would not believe, what? In the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's the condemnation right there. The Bible said they condemned already. Already. You would condemn already. Jesus came to save us from condemnation. To deliver us from condemnation. Let's finish this. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. Their doctrines. Their doctrine that they should believe a lie. They believe they doctrine. Right? That they might be damned who believe not the truth, the love of God. Remember the love of the truth we just read it. That they might be saved. The love of the truth. But had pleasure, right, and unrighteousness. We just read that in Romans 1. They reject Jesus Christ so they can have pleasure and unrighteousness. So he sent you strong delusion to believe a lie that you might be damned. But we are bound to give thanks always to you, always to God, for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, the love of the truth. Right? Salvation is love. The gospel is love. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, the black Messiah, Jesus Christ. Whereunto He called you by our... Look at this. He called us by the Apostles' Doctrine. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the apostles, doctor, the gospel. Let's read it again. Whereunto he called you by our gospel. We stand on the prophets, Old Testament, and the apostles, New Testament, to the obtaining of the glory of of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what you're supposed to obtain. His glory. Let's get that. Uh, Ephesians 2.20. Ephesians 2.20. And are built upon the foundation. Of the apostles. Their doctrine. And prophets. Moses and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That's the foundation, Jesus Christ. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. In whom all the building fitly framed together grow up unto a holy temple in the Lord. That's what you're supposed to become, a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Your spirit's supposed to be separated from the world. The corruption of this world. The contamination of this world. 1 Corinthians 11. Let's get 1 Corinthians 11. 1. 
First Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11.1 Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even I, as I also am of Christ. We're supposed to follow these apostles. Especially Apostle Paul. Look what he said. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. How will you get thrown all off with these other doctrines? You're not following the apostles. 1 Corinthians 4.15. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 4. We're going to get some understanding today. 15. You're going to have to really fight hard to put blinders on your ass not to see it today. You're going to see it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4.15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. The apostles' doctrine. Paul has begotten us through the gospel. And he said, follow me as I follow Christ Jesus. Let's read that next verse. Whereunto I beseech you, Look, be ye followers of me. Now, how y'all, how y'all getting off course when Paul says follow him? Right? We believe uh, their gospel. Let's get that uh, first stage. Uh, is that what we want? Uh, second stage. Second stage is one ten. Let's go there. Second day is one ten. This is what he's saying. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Right? Now let's start up. Oh yeah, let's start up. Let's go up some. Because this is all oh, this is neat. Let's start with verse four. So that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God. Right? That's the house of the Lord. For your patience and faith and your persecution and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment. This is righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy. You got to go through this righteous judgment. Persecution for his name's sake. Right. That ye might be counted worthy of the kingdom of God. Right. For which ye also suffer. We suffer for the kingdom of God. We hazard our life for the kingdom of God. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God. Right? To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. They got theirs coming. They got that tribulation coming. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Check this out. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel. You highlighting that gospel every time we hit it. They obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the apostles' doctrine, and the prophets. Right? Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the glory of the Lord, from the glory of his power. They're going to be destroyed from his presence. In his glory. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. And be to be admired in them that believe. Look. Because our testimony. The apostles testimony. Our testimony among you was believed in that day. And the testimony is Jesus Christ. Spirit of prophecy. Our testimony. There it is again. Warranty. Uh. Also, you pray for us always for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith and power that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. His name should be the apple of your eye. That's your glory. That's God's glory. Let me say it again. His name should be 
the apple of your eye because that's his glory and that's your glory. Right? Philippians 2, let's get it. Philippians 2, 9. Are we going to make it make sense today? Philippians 2, 9, man. Wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. This is the apple of God's eye. Right? That at the name of Jesus, that's the apple of God's eye right there. His name. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the apple of his eye. His name exalted. His name exalted is the apple of his eye. Oh, we ain't done. I pray y'all stay with this video. As long as if they, uh, it's still a Holy Ghost boot camp. All my videos are Holy Ghost boot camp. And not everybody can hang. Not everybody can hang. King Superman videos are Holy Ghost boot camp. Psalms 115, verse 1. Not unto us, O Lord. Not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory. For thy mercy. And for thy truth sake. His name gives the glory. His name is the apple of his eye. The glory is the apple of his eye. Not unto us, but unto thy name. O oh Lord, give glory. Right? Did we do Ephesians 2? 20, if we, let's get it again. Just, uh, ain't nothing wrong with getting it again. Ephesians 2 20. Sometimes you gotta you got to drill it in. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. This is one book. And prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He built upon them. One book. One book. And uh, uh, let's go to Luke. Luke 24. And... 44. Let's go Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you. These are words and read. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets. What, what, what did he fulfill? The law. The law. By what? Giving us his love. His love is his name. And his name is his word. Right? Giving us, giving us his word. Right? A compassion. Forgiveness. Mercy. Grace. Right? And the list goes on and on. Salvation. Right? So, which were written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms. All talking about his what? Mercy, compassion, forgiveness, right? His love concerning me. All these Jesus said was concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And how many of us need him to open our understanding? Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer. And to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. The name of Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Among all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. Judgment began at the house of God. Right? And you are witness of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Right. That's, that's the Apostle's doctrine. God kept his word, didn't he? That go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis 1. Uh, yeah, that go all the way back to Genesis. Uh, Genesis 1. 
and 26, right? And God said, let, the, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. The image. God kept his word, didn't he? He kept his word. Because he loved us so much. You know. Uh, let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. He kept his word, didn't he? Romans 10. 10 verse 8. Let's go to Romans 10. And verse 8. Um, Romans. I had it in my hand. Knocked it off. Romans 10. And verse 8. But what said it? The word is nigh thee. The scriptures. Right? Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. That's what the scriptures is, right? Which we preach. We preach the word of faith. The scriptures. The gospel. Same thing. The faith is the gospel, y'all. Of Jesus Christ. That's what we preach. You should be preaching that. That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Right? For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that name that's exalted, we read that, Philippians, that's the glory. Right? That's the apple. That should be the apple of your eye, his name. Who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him who they have not believed? How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? And Jesus was the first sent, right? Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he did his work. He finished the work. He did such a wonderful job, the Father exalted his name. He did such a great job, right? Let's see what he said. Let's prove that he did such a great job. Let's go to uh, John, is it 828? John 828. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then we just read God had highly exalted him. So you got to do it too. You got to do what God did. God had highly exalted him. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Jesus saying this, And when you have lifted up the Son of Man, you shall know that I am He. You're going to know I'm the Father. You're going to know I'm God. And that I do nothing of myself. But as my father had taught me, I speak these things. Check this out. And he that sent me is with me. For the father had not left me alone. For I always, for I do always those things that please him. See that? I do always those things that please him. That's the life you need. So we got to become the apple of God's eye. Jesus is the apple of God's eye. And Jesus' father is the apple of Jesus' eye. Right? Jesus always did those things that pleased the father. Ain't that what this is all about? Right? Uh, but that's the gospel. That you can only do that through the gospel. Hebrews 11, 5. Let's go there. Hebrews 11, 5. Let's go there real quick. It says, By faith Enoch was translated... Or transformed. Same thing. That's what it means. By faith, right? Which is the word of the gospel. We read that in, in Romans 10. Right? The word which we preach. Romans 10, 8. On down. Right? By faith, those scriptures, the word of God, 
the word of faith. Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Didn't Jesus told us that we believe in him? We should not see death. John 11, 25, 26. He said, I'm the resurrection and the light. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus said that. Uh, John 11, 25, 26. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. He was not found of death. Because God translated, God hid him from death. That's what you and me, uh, that's the gift for you and me if we believe in Jesus. We won't see death. God translated Enoch. For before his translation, look, he had this testimony. Do you have this testimony? That he pleased God. We just read where Jesus said, I always do those things that please my father. I always do those things that please God. Jesus said that in John 8, 29. That's the testimony that we need. You can only do this with Jesus. Jesus is your gift to please God. Uh, Romans uh, 6.23. Romans 6.23. Uh, don't make me hit every scripture, y'all. But let's keep going. But look, without faith, without Jesus, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right? Without Jesus, Jesus is the faith. That's why I say that. Because Revelation 14, 12. Don't make me go to every scripture, y'all. Revelation 14, 12. The faith is Jesus. Jesus is the faith, the gift of God. Romans 6, 23. The gift of God is the faith. That's your uh, uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. Faith is the gift of God. Which is Jesus Christ is the faith. Right? Which is the apple of God's eye. He's trying to give us the apple of his eye. Let me show you. Uh, let's go to Matthew. Y'all know where I'm going here. 17.5. 17.5. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son. Right? My beloved son, who always do those things that please me. In whom I am well pleased. Look, God is well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear Jesus. Second Timothy, let's go. Uh, let's go. Uh, 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 Deuteronomy. Uh, this is so many. Come on. Deuteronomy. Y'all know what's up. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, and that really starts with verse 1. But for time's sake, I can't, we ain't, ain't going to be able to get all that. So let's go to verse 7. Deuteronomy, it really starts with verse 1, but let's go to verse 7. Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders. All right. Uh, worry about that scam calls, y'all. Uh devil trying to interfere with the video come on now uh let's read it again remember the days of old consider the years of many generations the past y'all do that now consider the years of many generations consider the days of old ask thy father from the scriptures y'all right second timothy uh one three paul told you he served the gospel of his ancestors his forefathers paul said that Right? Ask thy father and he will show thee thy elders. That, you can only see them in the scriptures. Right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those are our elders. Right? And they will tell thee when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance. Right? And this is law. This is set in the earth. Right? This is, this is lot. Everybody's lot. You know? When he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Look, Jacob is the lot. There's a lot of his inheritance. This cannot be changed. 
This is settled in the heavens. Jacob is, is the lot of God's inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste, howling wilderness, and led him about and instructed him to keep him as, look, the apple of his eye. We the apple of God's eye, the elect now. The elect that comes out of Jacob. They inherit the holy mountain. We are the apple of his eye. We are the apple of his eye. Let's, let's get that. Isaiah. Isaiah uh, 65 and 9. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah. When you get the gift of Jesus Christ, you become the apple of his eye. Isaiah 65 now. He gave his glory to his name. We read that. Psalm 115 verse 1. And I will bring forth a seed, the Christ. Right? The Abraham seed. Right? The Christ. Out of Jacob. Right? And out of Judah. That same seed out of Jacob. Out of Judah. Jesus Christ come from Royal Tribe. Hebrews 7 14. Judah. An inheritor of my holy, of my mountains. We know that's his holy mountains. And my elect, children of Israel and Jesus, the elect that come out of Jacob, shall inherit it. And my servants, that's more than one, well, that's got an S on it, shall dwell there. His servants shall dwell. Right? And, and this is a holy mountain. And I will bring forth a seed, the Christ, out of Jacob, and out of Judah, the, the Christ, an inheritor of my mountains, and my elect shall inherit. We know the elect. Just in case somebody don't know, let's go to Isaiah forty-five. And get that. Isaiah forty-five. And uh, let's start with verse three. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, right? His elect, and hidden riches in secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, look, my lot. Remember we read that in Deuteronomy 32? Jacob is his lot, the lot of his inheritance. The elect come out of Jacob. Watch this. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect. Right? Jacob's name had to, was changed to Israel. That's who makes covenant with God. Right? And Israel... Uh, received the new name of Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ. Revelation uh, three twelve. My elect. Israel's his elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surname. That, that, that surname is a family name right there. Ephesians uh, 3, 14, 15. Ephesians 3. That's surname. The, though thou hast not known me. Let's get that Ephesians. This is the uh, apple of his eye. That's why we covering this today, y'all. You want the apple of God's eye. Ephesians 3, what did I say, 14? Ephesians 3, 14, 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Don't get it twisted. Watch this. Of whom the whole family, surname D, that surname, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family is named Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We all get that name. That's an inherited name. That that, that name that was exalted. Uh, Hebrew, y'all saying, well, why are you covering this today, Kingston? It's because some people don't know. Hebrews 1.4. Being made so much more better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. That's why he said Revelation 12, my new name. Because he inherited an exalted name. He inherited. That's your Revelation 3.12. Okay. For time's sake, I ain't going to go there. I'm not going to go there. But let's go to uh, 2 Timothy Two eight, if we would. Second Timothy, y'all know time flies when you're making a video. Second Timothy, two. Uh, do we want that? I don't really want that right now. But let's go to Ephesians one. 
we might come back there. Ephesians 1 and 6. We might come back to that second Timothy. See if I can work that in, maybe. Uh, to the praise of the glory. Remember that glory? That's the apple of his eye, his glory. His name. That's exalted. To the praise of the glory of his grace. When he had made us accepted in the beloved. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. God's glory. That's God's glory. The son is God's glory. That's the life you and me uh, are to obtain. We read that. We already read that. Go back over the video. You'll see we already read that. That's the life we are to obtain. Uh, to be the apple of his eye. Let's go to Jude. Let's go to Jude. Uh, right before Revelations, that book. Jude. Uh, what we want? 20. Let's go to Jude. 20. It's really that whole chapter. Let's go to verse 20. But ye... But ye, beloved, remember, we accepted in the blood, in Christ, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You got to stay with the scriptures, man. Stay with the scriptures. Keep yourselves in the love, there's that love, of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what are we looking for? Unto eternal life. And some having compassion, making a difference. And others say with the fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Right? This is how we become the apple of his eye, right? Right? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you 